Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Robbins with End Time Ministries. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the End Time Show. I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to let a timeline answer our question today. Is the rapture imminent? Can the rapture happen at any time? Could the Lord split the clouds wide open this afternoon and gather the elect unto Him? It's a big question in the news right now. Or some are saying that the rapture could happen at any moment and that it's the next event on God's prophetic timeline. So what I thought I would do today is to walk you through a timeline to see if the Bible can answer these questions. Well, of course it can, but let's let this timeline do that. And I want to show you how you can use this timeline to your advantage as well because it answers so many questions about these end times that we're living in. So, the first example I want to give you to show you how this timeline can help us answer this question is in 2 Thessalonians chapter, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The Apostle Paul says, You have no need, brethren, that I write unto you about the seasons and the times, because yourselves know that the... the rapture occurs as a thief in the night. All of us believe that. I believe that. That's what the Bible says. But many would say that the Lord coming to gather His church unto Him and that the rapture would occur prior to the final seven years. And they would say that that's the Great Tribulation. And we're going to talk about that on today's program. But that the thief in the night, it only happens one time in the near future. But many are teaching that that happens prior to the Great Tribulation. Now, this is what I want to allow the timeline to answer for us. Now, I want, we're looking at a timeline here today, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to go through the timeline really quickly, but the first thing I want to go through is this, the question, is the rapture imminent? So the thief in the night, many say it happens at the beginning of the final seven years. But let me show you how we can let this answer the question for us. I want to bring you over here to the end of the timeline because you can see at the end of the final seven years here, this is, a, this is the end right here where the second coming of Jesus occurs, and many events happen simultaneously. But we're looking at the second coming right up here that happens right there at the end of the final seven years. Well, it's also at this event that the Battle of Armageddon occurs. It's right here on the timeline, right here at the end of the final seven years. And that occurs, uh, uh, the best account of that is Revelation chapter 16 and Revelation chapter 19. Those read right over into each other. There's parenthetical chapters, 17 and 18 in between that. But you can read chapter 16 right over into 19, starting at about verse 6 or 7, and then read right on down. It's, it's one story that continues on through there. Well, at the Battle of Armageddon, that's when the second coming of Jesus Christ happens. Everybody recognizes that. But we're talking about the imminency of the rapture. When does the rapture occur? Well, if you go to Revelation chapter 16, it starts out with the vials of the wrath of God down through there. And then when it gets through the sixth vial of the wrath of God, which is when the armies, the world governing armies, the great river Euphrates is dried up to make way for the kings of the east to come down against Israel to battle. That's the sixth vial of the wrath of God. Then in Revelation 16, 15, after the sixth vial, it says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed are they that, uh, uh, blessed are they that watcheth and keepeth their garments, lest they walk naked and they see his shame. So the Apostle Paul said, We know the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night, that that's when the rapture is going to occur. But then the Bible tells us, this timeline tells us, that it occurs right there just prior to the Battle of Armageddon being engaged. They've come across the Euphrates River. They're coming down to the plain of Megiddo to engage Israel in battle at the Battle of Armageddon. And then in Revelation 16, 15, it says, Behold, I come as a thief. That's when the rapture occurs. We're right here at the end of the final seven years, just after the Great Tribulation. And that's when... The John told us when he wrote the book of Revelation that that's when the rapture would occur. That's when he would come as a thief in the night. 
So you can see how advantageous an understanding of this timeline is. It helps us to answer so many questions, not just the imminency of the rapture. Is it imminent? Can it happen right now? You know, a lot of people have said, well, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Jesus said that in Matthew 24, and everybody holds to that. And I believe that as well. But it was for a certain time. In Matthew chapter 24, it was in the Olivet Discourse, and Jesus was teaching. In the beginning, he takes down, and he goes down in the, in the Olivet Discourse, and he's showing them, in Matthew 24, he's showing them the temple and different things. It was at the time of the feast. He had come down from Galilee, and he, the, the, the apostles, or the disciples are showing him the uh, temple. And he's all these beautiful buildings, and he says, you know what? There's coming a time, guys, when all this is going to come down. Not one stone is going to be left upon another. And it was like throwing cold water in their face. Well, he leads them over onto the Mount of Olives. He sits them down, and they ask him, what in the world? When are these things going to happen? What's going to be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And that's what he starts talking about. And that's what I want to talk to you about on the program today. We're going to walk through a timeline here, and I'm going to go through some different things that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 24 and then on over into the book of Revelation. But Jesus in Matthew 24 he starts talking to us. He's not talking to the disciples at this point because they want to know what's it going to be like at the time of your second coming. And of course, in Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31, Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, with the sun be darkened, moon shall not give her light, stars will fall from heaven, the powers of heaven shall be shaken, then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and then shall they see the sign of the coming of the Son of Man in heaven, and he shall send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet, to gather together his elect. The gathering together is of utmost importance. It's talked about over and over and over in the Bible. The, it's, that is the rapture, our gathering together unto him. The gathering together is also talked about at the parable of the wheat and the tares. In Matthew chapter 13, where the wheat and the tares are gathered together, they wanted to go in and tear up the tares, and the Lord said, no, don't tear up the tares, the wicked ones, because in doing that, you'll tear up the wheat as well. But wait until the time of the harvest, and we will gather them both together. The gathering together is the exact same thing as the rapture. And we're going to determine, using this timeline, we're going to go through a timeline of events, God's prophetic events. We're going to go through that today. We'll talk about it, and we'll show how we can use this timeline to answer the question, is the rapture imminent? Does the rap is the rapture rapture the next thing on God's prophetic timeline? Well, we're going to go through that timeline to see answer that question. A voice spoke to me and said, "I've got something I want to show you." I was so sure God had talked to me, and I was stunned on what I saw. A direct fulfillment of this over 2,500-year-old prophecy. The United States will stand with Israel. Why haven't I ever seen this before? One-third of humanity will die. What do these beasts symbolize? The lion, the bear, the leopard. The combined beast from Revelation 13 represents the end-time government of the Antichrist. Understanding the end time. Now streaming on End Time Plus and available to order at endtime.com slash UET. Go to endtime.com slash UET or call 800 End Time. Are you ready for an extraordinary journey to the region that is the focus of more end time Bible prophecy than any other? Well, look no further. Join us on an unforgettable journey to Israel. Our adventure begins down in Jerusalem, where we will teach on the Mount of Olives, sing at the Garden of Gethsemane, walk down through the Kidron Valley, then we'll make our way north, have a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee while visiting Joppa, Mount Carmel, baptize in the Jordan River, and so much more. Don't miss out on this incredible trip to Israel. Spaces are limited. Book your tour today. Visit endtime.com slash tour 
or call us at 1-800-END-TIME. Join us for an experience that you will never forget. What if you could understand Bible prophecy? Dave Robbins, the host of the End Time Show's TV and radio programs, is holding a free prophecy conference near you. Gain peace and understanding about what the Bible says concerning end time prophecy. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com slash events to see when Dave will be in a location near you. Welcome back, everybody. Now, let's get let's dive right on off into this timeline today because I want you to understand if you once you understand this timeline, it can help you answer so many questions. When does the rapture happen? When does the great tribulation start? Uh, when does the mark of the beast going to be doled out? Can I take the mark of the beast now? What about world government? What should I participate in? What should I not participate in? What's of eternal consequence? This timeline of events will answer all of those questions. So let me really quickly run you through this timeline real quick and uh, so that to help you understand. And then if we have time, we'll come back and go through all of the scriptures and everything. And I'll, I'll try to give you them maybe as we go and then I'll come back and explain some stuff before we get done here. But on the timeline here, there are events that are ongoing events, things that will happen from now and they've been happening for years now that will happen, we'll see the fulfillment of this all the way to the second coming of Jesus Christ. They're ongoing fulfillments. And then there are other things that are once and done, like the Chernobyl, Chernobyl nuclear accident, the third trumpet, that happened and then it was over. The tearing down of the Berlin Wall, the healing of the deadly wound in 1989, that happened and then it was over. But we're, we're gonna see many of these different events, ongoing events and once and done as we go along here. Again. We're answering the question, when does the rapture happen? But we're using a timeline to answer the question for us. So on this timeline, you'll see here that some of the ongoing events, there are three ongoing events that we're watching right now. There is the, the world government that's forming right now. The world government's found in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. The combo beast, the body of the leopard, the feet of the bear, the mouth of the lion, the ten horn kingdom. That's a combo beast of European um, origin that will be the power base of the Antichrist. That's being established right now. And that is World Government 101. The United Nations is the power base of that world governing body. And then there are many other organizations that go along with it. The International Criminal Court, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the World Health Organization, World Trade Organization. All of these are designed to run the world. So it's an ongoing fulfillment of world government. The next one, world religion, found in Revelation 11, chapter, Revelation 13, verses 11 through 15. And then it's also mentioned again, two full chapters is devoted to that, Revelation chapter 17 and 18, to the judgment of that entity in the end time. These are the ongoing fulfillments of Bible prophecy that we're watching right now. Both of those are happening all the way to the second coming of Jesus Christ. We're also watching precursors to the mark of the beast. And the, now we're prior to the seven year, uh, the final seven years happening. That's what this line represents right here. We're just prior to that now. We're coming up to that. So we're watching precursors to the mark of the beast because the mark of the beast will be implemented here in just a few years. But the system has to be set up in order to, to be able to economically sanction the people here on the earth. And so we're watching that system with the, the potential for a central bank digital currency system, facial recognition photographs, moving off of a cashless society onto a digital society. We're watching all of that happening right now as we speak. And this is all on God's prophetic timeline because there will come a time when the, these will go from just systems and entities that are being established to when the world government becomes the kingdom of the Antichrist, the kingdom of the false prophet. And we'll get to that on our timeline here. Now, also at this point, I probably ought to mention the Six Trumpet War. You say, what are we doing? We're going through God's prophetic timeline. Many say the rapture could happen at any time on God's prophetic timeline. It's the next event. 
but we're going to go through the timeline to show you how that's impossible. Now, I know that's a bold statement, but it's a biblical statement. So, the next thing we're going to look at, the Sixth Trumpet War, Revelation 9, verse 13 through 21. It's a war that will emanate out of the, out of the Euphrates River region. It's going to kill one-third of the entire Earth's population, and a 200 million man army will participate in that war. And if we have time, I'll come back and explain that a little bit more. But I want to make sure we get through this timeline. Now, the event that starts the final seven years is a peace agreement in the Middle East between the Israelis and the Palestinians. The peace agreement is mentioned in Daniel 9, 27, and it's the final seven years of Daniel's 70 weeks, or a 490-year prophecy. The first 483 years have already, that's already taken place. What we, you and I are looking for is the final seven years. We have not entered into that final seven-year period. The final seven years is not great tribulation. Jesus specifically prophesied that the great tribulation would only be the final three and one-half years of that. But there is a final seven-year period that is mentioned in Scripture, Daniel 9, 27. And he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many for a final seven-year period. And so this is, that's why we are always talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and will they get a peace agreement signed? Will Saudi Arabia and, and Israel normalization, will that be, is that the 800-pound gorilla in the room that once we move that out of the way and they normalize, if they ever do, could that lead to an Israeli-Palestinian peace agreement? But the one that starts the final seven years has to be Israel and the Palestinians. Once that peace agreement is signed, then Israel, one of the characteristics of that peace agreement will be Israel during the first three and one half years of this final seven years, which is broken into two parts, the first three and one half years and the last three and one half years. That is when Israel is going to be able to build her third temple because the temple mount has been placed under a sharing arrangement. And this is talked about in Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. John, measure the temple, but don't measure the outer court because it's trodden down of the Gentiles for 42 months. That's the final 42 months of this seven-year period, the final three and one-half years. So the temple has to be built in the first three and one-half years of that prior to the final three and one-half. So there's going to be a temple, a sharing arrangement up on the temple mount. I know that seems impossible at this point. But the Bible specifically, in Revelation 11, 11, 1 and 2, John told us it would be sh under a sharing arrangement between the Muslims and the Jews. And that's going to allow Israel, during that first three and one and a half years, to build her third temple. Now, that brings us to the halfway point of this final seven-year period. And the Bible's very clear on all of these dates and time, or I should say times, and when these things occur on the timeline. The Bible says that halfway through that final seven-year period, there is a war in heaven. This is Revelation chapter 12. This is when Michael and his archangels fight against Satan and his angels, and Satan is defeated. At this point, Satan still has access to heaven. And so, but he's defeated by Michael and his archangels, and his punishment and that is that he is banished to the earth no more access to heaven. Currently, Satan has access to heaven. I know that sounds crazy to even talk about that, but that's actually scriptural. Uh, you remember in the book of Job, chapter 1, the Bible says that the sons of God appear before God to give an account, and Satan was with them. Satan still had access to heaven beyond the garden. He was not banished to the earth in the Garden of Eden. And he still had access to heaven at that point, and the Bible today calls him the accuser of the brethren. Well, the Bible says when he loses this war in Revelation chapter 12, that he is bound to the earth. And the Bible says, Rejoice you that are in heaven, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because Satan comes down unto you having great wrath. Because, And at that time, the Bible says he persecutes the woman that has 12 stars around her head, which is Israel in that chapter. So he persecutes Israel and those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the church on the earth. But the Bible says in Revelation 12, 14, that Israel is carried away on the wings of a great eagle, where she is nourished in her place for time, times, and half a time. That final three and one half year period, 
and from the face of the serpent or the world governing body. So it lets us know that Satan is bound to the earth. Remember, halfway through this final seven years, that's when the war in heaven happens and Satan is banished to the earth because he persecutes them. That's the great tribulation for three and one half years. The Bible says, Woe unto those that, uh, woe unto, um, rejoice you there in heaven, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because Satan comes down unto you having great wrath. So that final three and one half years that it talks about right there in Revelation 12, 14, that's the great tribulation. The great tribulation is the wrath of Satan, not the wrath of God. That's a very important point. Because a lot of people say, well, we're not appointed unto the wrath of God, so the rapture has to happen before that. I totally agree we're not appointed unto the wrath of God. But the great tribulation is not the wrath of God. It's the wrath of Satan. Read Revelation chapter 12. And so, the, right there during, at the final three and one half year point, many events happen simultaneously. They're just bing, 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 right down there at the three and a half years. The Bible's very uh, clear about this. Jesus said that when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, whoso readeth, let him understand. And then let them which be in Judea, the modern day West Bank, let them flee. And then in verse 21 in Matthew 24, he says, for then will be great tribulation, such as never was before or never will be again. A, the greatest time of persecution the world has ever known. Jesus specifically prophesied that that would begin the great tribulation, that final three and one half year period. And then also, this is when the false prophet is going to support the Antichrist. This is when the um, Antichrist, and the, this, so the Antichrist is revealed at this point. This is the event, this is when the abomination of uh, uh, desolation will occur when the Antichrist stands in a rebuilt Jewish temple and proclaims to be God. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 through 4. This is when uh, the Bible says he is revealed and the false prophet at that time, whoever the Pope is at that time, he will be revealed as well. That's when we know that uh, who the false prophet is and he will come into complete alliance with the Antichrist and they will work together to rule the world for that final three and one half year period. It's very important that we understand the Antichrist is only going to have three and one half years to reign. He's not going to reign for a seven year period. There's no scriptures in the Bible for that. He is influential in getting the peace agreement signed. That is true. But, and then the war is going to happen at either before or just after the peace agreement. And then the, the war will be the entrance ramp for the Antichrist. But that's not when he's revealed. The Bible specifically says he's revealed at the time of the abomination of desolation when the Antichrist stands in a rebuilt Jewish temple and proclaims to be God. Now that's at the three and one half year point, halfway through that final seven year period. Now, that brings us to the final portion of the final seven years. And always remember that the final seven years is broken into two parts, the first three and one half and the last three and one half. So when you get to this final three and one half year period, this is when Jesus Christ said that this would be the great tribulation. Remember, he said, when you see the abomination of desolation, let them which be in Judea flee, for then will be great tribulation. So the great tribulation only lasts three and one half years. I guess if you want a seven year tribulation, you know, you can hope for that, but I don't want one. I don't, I don't want any tribulation, but the fact of the matter is the Bible says every time it talks about the great tribulation, it talks about 1260 days, time times and half a time, a time is one year, times is two years, half a time or the dividing of time is half a year. And then, or it talks about a 42 month span. It's all three and one half years. That's the final three and one half years. So that's the great tribulation. And also during this final three and one half years, early on we talked about the world government that's being established. Well, at this three and one half year point, that's when the Antichrist will usurp authority over that world governing body, and that's when he will be the ruler. That's when it will become the Antichrist kingdom, and that's when he will, um, that's when he will rule the world government. It's only going to be for a three and one half year period. That's also when the establishment of a world religion 
Uh, last week we just saw the Parliament of World's Religions meet when they are, they're gathering all the religions of the world together to celebrate their signature document, which is the, uh, the global ethic that was written by Hans Kuhn years ago. And they're saying we need to sink all our narrow differences, even though one of the ladies who was over the, one of their main breakout groups was a witch. She was a Wiccan. She was talking about earth worship and all these paganistic rituals. And they were, she was over one of the main breakout groups and one of the main board members on the Parliament of World Religions. And so that's when the, uh, the global religious system that's being established at that three and one half year mark, that's when it becomes the kingdom of the false prophet. And then also during this final three and one half years is when the mark of the beast is, will be fully implemented. You cannot take the mark of the beast prior to the Antichrist usurping authority over the world governing body. Yes, we are watching precursors leading up to that. We've talked many times about the facial recognition photographs, chips under the skin, um, central bank digital currencies, totalitarian uh, global identification um, efforts by the World Bank, ID40, and by the United Nations, ID2020. All of these things are precursors. I've had many people say, because there are thousands and thousands of people in Europe that are already taking chips in their hand. And I've had many people call me and say, have they already taken the mark of the beast? And I have to say no, because until the beast comes on the scene, you cannot take the mark of the beast. So right now we're watching precursors leading up to the mark of the beast, but there will come a time when the Antichrist usurps authority over that world governing body, that's when the mark of the beast is fully implemented. They that understand what is taking place will instruct many. Except a man is born again, he can enter or see the kingdom of God. I don't care what label you've been given or what label you've given yourself, you are essential. You still matter. This is a journey, and when we get to the other side of that, that's where our prize is, that's where our reward is. End time is not going anywhere. Satan and the elites of this world don't want you to understand the timeline leading to the second coming of Jesus. You can pinpoint where we are in the end time, understand how you fit in, and be filled with hope in God's plan by watching the future according to Bible prophecy. Go to endtime.com future or call 800 end time. That's 800-363-8463. Now you can see how important it is that you understand the timeline. Because many people will say, well, uh, this, the, the, the rapture is the next event on God's prophetic timeline. Well, once you understand the timeline, you can say, well, that's really not possible because the Bible says that he comes as a thief in the night. And in Revelation 16, the thief in the night, in Revelation 16, 15, it's a very key scripture. It says it happens right there at the time of the Battle of Armageddon. Well, I guess if you didn't understand the timeline, then you could say it happens prior to that. But once you understand the timeline, then you can know, no, I know when it happens on the timeline, right? God's prophetic timeline, he answers all the questions. So when we're talking about the mark of the beast system, it's very important. Nobody on earth can take the mark of the beast right now because the beast isn't here. The Antichrist has not been revealed. He's revealed when he stands in a rebuilt Jewish temple, proclaims to be God. That's the abomination of desolation. That happens halfway through. That happens on this halfway period. That's when the abomination of desolation occurs. So once that happens, then he will start implementing the mark of the beast. Now, let me pause right here.
because I've talked many times about the central bank digital currency. And I know that, I, and I've made the statement many times that this is one of the leading things that I see leading, pointing us towards the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is going to be all about economic sanctioning. If they can get control of your finances, they got you, right? And the Bible says that he's going to give everybody uh, a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And without that, you're not going to be buy, able to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to function in society at all. That's going to be the goal of the Antichrist. And they're already sanctioning nations on a national level. And they're starting to economically sanction people that don't come into compliance or conform to their edicts. Remember the truckers up in Canada where they closed off their bank accounts, business and personal, because they were fighting against the vaccines and they were protesting and different things and they just cut their bank accounts off. They froze them. Well, that's just a taste of what's coming under the mark of the beast system. And so it's at, during this final three and one half year uh, period, that's going to be the great tribulation, the final three and one half years. And that's when the Antichrist is going to usurp authority over a fully functioning world governing body. The, the, whoever the Pope is at time, will, um, he will grab the reins of this world religious system. And these guys are pretty much going to be in control up to that point. But this is when the Bible says they will be revealed as the Antichrist. And then also, the, this is when the mark of the beast will be doled out at the time of the, th at the three and a one half year mark. When the Antichrist takes control of the world government, he's going to say, okay, everybody's going to bow down to me, period. This economic sanctioning system will probably be pretty much already put in place. That's what the central bank digital currency could do. If we move off of cash, cash is freedom. Cash, I mean, if I give you $100, you can do whatever you want, and the government has no idea what you're doing. But once we move off of cash, whether it's a shekel in Israel uh, a euro, whatever it is, a dollar bill in the United States, if they can get us all off of cash and onto a digital system, then all they can do is track your data. I know every cent that goes into your account, every cent that comes out of your account, and hopefully it doesn't get to where that's the only method of currency that we have, because then, I mean, the mark of the beast system would be easy to implement. All I've got to do is say, Dave Robbins didn't bound down to our edicts, so just invalidate his account. Boom, you're done. You understand what I'm saying? That's where it looks like we're going to get to. Now, I don't believe every nation on the earth. I had a guy ask me this the other day. The Bible says all the world will wander after the beast. That's true in a generality. The Bible prophecies talk in generalities many times. The Bible says all the world will wander after the beast, but if you study every verse that pertains to this time, the Bible also says that the country of Jordan, this is uh, Revelation, or I'm sorry, Daniel chapter 11, where the Bible says, These shall escape out of his hand. The children of Edom, Moab, and Ammon. That's, um, the Edomites are in southern Jordan. There's the Moab mountains in western Jordan. And there's the um, Ammonites, which was the, the modern day um, city of Ammon is the capital of Jordan. So it's the country of Jordan. The Bible specifically tells us the country of Jordan will not come under the reign of the Antichrist. And then also... We know that Israel will never come under the full reign of the Antichrist because the, Bible's, that, um, the Bible says that the world governing armies will come down against Israel to battle at the Battle of Armageddon. You do not invade a nation that you already control. And then also the United States is, is not going to come under the full reign of the Antichrist. I told somebody that yesterday down in New Orleans at our conference and the guy said, man, that just seems impossible. Look at what's going on with the Biden administration and the Federal Reserve and everything. And I said, look, I, I know that it seems impossible. I study this stuff all the time. But the fact of the matter is, if the Bible talks about it and the Bible prophesies it, the prophecies always come to pass. I don't care what the geopolitical situation, what it looks like. I mean, just prior to the tearing down of the Berlin Wall, the healing of the deadly wound in Revelation 13, it looked impossible, didn't it? It was a symbol of the Cold War. However, there came a time when um, President Ronald Reagan said, Gorbachev, if you want peace like you say you do, tear down this wall. What happened? Gorbachev, okay, I'll tear it down. And it came down, and he stood and applauded as it came down. Yes, I know what I'm doing. You guys think communism's dying, but it's really not because I'm going to push socialism, the economic, 
I don't think I can roll in with the tanks and take over the world, but I guarantee you I can with socialism, and that's what's happening. So it looked impossible just before it happened, but it surely came down. And now here we are. It looks impossible that the United States will stand against, with Israel against the world governing body, especially when, with uh, the administration that's in there right now. But listen to me. The prophecies always, always, always come to pass. Okay? But you see how important it is that you understand these timelines because they help us. And my main question today is, is the rapture imminent? The rapture of the church. Can it happen any day? Now, I, I should say this. The rapture may not happen today. But anyone, none of us are promised tomorrow. I know we always talk about the pre-post-trib rapture. It's, it's something that I like to talk about because it's in the Word of God and I want to get the Word of God. I want to get these teachings right. But I'm saying to you, regardless, you've got to be ready. Nobody's promised tomorrow. Nobody. So make sure you're ready. If you've not been born again, Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man's born again, he can't enter or see the kingdom of God. If, you're not, if you've never been born again, then you've got to get that done today. Because you could meet your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, tonight or tomorrow morning or this coming weekend. You never know, right? None of us know. The obituaries are full every day. So make sure you're ready to go at all times. That's the number one thing in all of this, and I, and I recognize that. And so I make sure that I have a daily prayer life. I'm studying the Word of God. I'm doing the best I can to live for Jesus Christ and to have a relationship with Him and to make sure that I'm ready to go at all times. There's a sense of urgency in me. Now, I know what this prophecy timeline is. I understand it, and I know about when things are going to happen. But for me personally, I could be, I could be taken out of here this evening or tomorrow. Nobody's promised tomorrow. Nobody. And so it's of utmost importance that you know, beyond, uh, you know, it's good to have an understanding of the timeline, but you've got to be ready. Don't put off, say, well, Dave proved to us that the rapture is going to happen at the end of the final seven years. So I'll just wait, you know, six and a half years from now and get ready. I've actually talked to people who had that mindset. And I said, that's craziness. You're playing Russian roulette with your soul. Because you're rolling the dice and saying, hey, I'll make it no matter what happens. I'll make it that six, six and a half years, and then I'll, or seven years, or whatever it's going to be, and I'll get ready at that point. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. I know personally that nobody is promised tomorrow. You cannot have that mindset. But that does not negate the fact that there is a prophecy timeline of events that will happen. The Bible gives us that very clearly. So... Yes, I want to understand the Bible prophecy, but make sure you're ready to go at all times, okay? Now, right here at the end of the final seven years, we're on this timeline. The peace agreement that started the final seven years, that's going to come to an end. It was not an open-ended peace agreement. Daniel 9.27 does not say he confirmed the covenant with many and then went on down through what would happen after that. He would cause the sacrifices to cease and all these different things. He did not say that. He said he will confirm the covenant with many for, a fi for one final week, or it's a week of years. It's a seven-year period. I don't have time to go through all that. We teach all that in our new Understand the End Time DVDs, and it's in the new Understand the End Time book, which you can get right now at endtime.com. However, if once you understand all of that, then you can understand that the peace agreement is going to come to an end. And the reason it's going to come to an end is because they were not able to settle on who controls Jerusalem when the peace agreement was signed. So the Antichrist and all of his cohorts will say, look, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's get an interim agreement signed and we'll leave the status of Jerusalem until the end. And that's what's going to happen. But the world government, the international community... <clears throat> They all agree that there should be a two-state solution and that the Palestinians should have a capital in East Jerusalem there. Now, Israel is never going to divide Jerusalem ever again. The Bible tells us that at the time of the Battle of Armageddon, 
This is in Zechariah 14 that half of the city of Jerusalem will be captured at that point, which means up until that point, Israel has had control of all of Jerusalem. And so it lets, this is the main reason that the Battle of Armageddon will occur. The Battle of Armageddon is going to be fought over the status of Jerusalem and who controls the Temple Mount. That little 35 acres and that little city, it's very small, is going to be what starts the final battle on the planet that will ever occur, the Battle of Armageddon. It's talked about over and over and over in the Bible. And this is when God's going to come back during that war. And so the peace agreement's going to come to the end. That's when the world governing armies are going to come down. Uh, the Bible says in Revelation 16, which gives a very clear, like a chronological order of what happens. You can read that again right over into 19. But the, uh, the, um, it starts out with the first, the, these are the vials of the wrath of God. It starts out with the first vial being poured out upon those that received the mark of the beast during the Great Tribulation. And then it starts down through, many, the waters turned to blood, and, and all the way down through the kingdom of the Antichrist has turned dark, and many different, the sun is given the ability to burn people, scorch people. And then when it gets down to the sixth vial of the wrath of God, the Bible says that, that the kings of the east are coming down, and the great river Euphrates is dried up, which is up in, you got Israel, then you got Syria, and Euphrates is in northeastern part of Syria. That's going to be dried up to make way for the kings of the east to come down against Israel to battle. And that battle is going to be joined in the northern part of Israel in the plain of Megiddo. It's about seven miles by 15 miles, and it's just as flat as a pancake. Many of the battles in the Bible were fought over that. And so they're going to come down to battle right there. Now, the Bible says that this is when the second coming of Jesus will occur. <clears throat> the battle is going to be engaged right there at, up in the plain of Megiddo. And then Israel is going to fight valiantly against the world governing armies. And the Lord is watching all of this happen. And, and his wrath, other than the first vial, wrath, the wraths two through seven are going to be poured out upon those armies that have invaded Israel. And so isn't it important that this timeline, that you understand this, to know what's coming just ahead? Hi, I'm Judy Baxter. When Irvin and I got married, we didn't realize that our calling would be a prophetic ministry. Since we started End Time Ministries, there have been many times we weren't sure how we would pay the bills, but God has always provided. We started with the magazine, then went on radio and TV, and now we have the Jerusalem Prophecy College in Israel and online with End Time Plus. The mission has always been to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the End Time message. Through the years, my husband would say, we will see revival like never before in the last days. We are living in the end time now. Thank you for walking this journey with us and continuing in prayer. You are a part of the team. Thank you for your generous support. It is necessary for God's purpose. The most important thing is that you are ready when the Lord comes. Our hope is to help prepare you for that day. God bless you and we love you. Okay, everybody, let's wrap up this timeline because it's going to answer the question, is the coming of the Lord, is the rapture imminent? And is the rapture the next thing to occur on God's prophetic timeline? I think you're kind of seeing here that it's not. But it's, if you don't understand the timeline, then you might think that, right? So, right here at the, at the final seven years, the Battle of Armageddon has been engaged. Israel's fighting valiantly against the world governing army. But they're being driven back. I mean, imagine fighting Russia and many of the European nations, little old Israel, all at the same time. So they're being driven back. They're coming down through Bet Shean, where the, 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 Jordan, where the uh, plain of Megiddo comes down to meet the Jordan Valley. It's just as flat as this studio I'm standing in. Comes down to Bet Shean, they take a turn, they come south down to Jordan Valley, and they go turn again right there down by the Dead Sea. They go right up into Jerusalem. I've been on all those roads. I've, been, I've traveled where they're going to go. They go right up into Jerusalem, and the Battle of Armageddon is going to culminate right there 
at the city gates of Jerusalem between the Mount of Olives and the uh, Temple Mount. It's called the Kidron Valley. Jehoshaphat's there waiting on the prophecy and to be fulfilled, the Battle of Armageddon. And so this is at the end of the final seven-year period. It's the Battle of Armageddon. So the sixth vial of the wrath of God occurs, and then in between the sixth and seventh vial, the Bible says that, Behold, I come as a thief. This is again after the sixth vial. The, the Battle of Armageddon is already engaged. And, it's, well, it's at, the, it's at the, um, the infancy stage. And they're coming down, and the Bible says that the Lord, uh, Behold, I come as a thief. <clears throat> Revelation 16, 15. <clears throat> Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and he see his shame. This is the rapture. You say, hold on a minute. That's at the end of your timeline. That's exactly my point today, everybody. If you understand the timeline, then you'll know that the rapture of the church is not imminent. There are still many prophecies to be fulfilled before the rapture occurs. And then the Bible says, and that's in verse Revelation 16, 15, and then in verse 16, it says, Behold, uh, it says, He gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. The battle's engaged. They come down. Now, what happens at the time of the rapture? Well, the Bible says, this is when we talked earlier on about the gathering together. The Lord sends His angels immediately after the tribulation. Remember, we're right here at the end of the tribulation period on our timeline. Imme that's Jesus in Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, at the end of that final seven years, that the stars will be darkened, uh, the sun will be darkened, moon shall not give her light, stars will fall from heaven, and that's when the Son of Man would come to gather the elect unto Him. We have to be gathered. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and reign will be caught up to meet them in the air. It's the gathering together of the saints, Old Testament saints and New Testament saints. And the Bible says we're all gathered together unto Him. Look in Revelation 19. The Bible says that the bride hath made herself ready. The rapture didn't happen all the way back there in Revelation chapter 4. The Bible says the bride hath made herself ready in Revelation 19 and that she's prepared for the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the gathering together happens. All of the saints that are in the grave, all of the saints that are still alive, one church, one bride, <clears throat> they're all gathered together. You say, hold on a minute, I thought the rapture happened seven years ago. Jesus said in, in, in the parable of the wheat and the tares, uh-uh, don't gather anything ahead of time. You wait until the time of the harvest, and then we'll gather them together. And that's going to be at the end of the age. Read Revelation, or read Matthew chapter 13 about the parable of the wheat and the tares. And then the Bible says in Revelation 19, they're all gathered together. The, the bride hath made herself ready, that she's been raptured. And then we have the marriage supper of the Lamb in the sky. And then we go straight to fight directly to Israel. The Bible says the Lord comes in the book of Judah. It says He comes with ten thousands of His saints. In Revelation 19, it says He comes with the armies of heaven. That's us. We go straight to fight with Him on behalf of Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, Joel chapter 2, in the beginning, describes that army. The Bible says they'll be thrust through with the sword and won't hurt them. They'll keep on coming because we've been given immortal bodies at that point. And that's when we come back to fight on behalf of Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. The Lord is going to watch when Israel is getting ground to mincemeat. And it's going to look like Israel is going to be wiped out. And at that time, the, Lord is, the Bible says that the Lord, His anger is going to come up in His face. And He's going to come and He's going to fight as He did in the day of battle. He's going to come back and he's going to plant his feet up on the Mount of Olives. This is Zechariah chapter 14. And the Bible says that the Jews are going to come out to meet him. And the, they, they, the book of Zechariah says that they will, they will come to him and they'll say, hold on a minute, because the Jews recognize they believe the Messiah is coming back as a conquering king to deliver Israel. And that's what he's going to do. But they did not know that the Messiah was going to come twice they saw the prophecies of the conquering king. They did not know or they closed their eyes to the prophecy of him of coming as a suffering servant. So the Jews are looking to him to come back as a conquering king. They know the prophecies of Zechariah that he's coming back to plant his feet on the Mount of Olives. So he's going to come back, plant his feet upon the Mount of Olives. The Jews will come out to him and the Bible tells us 
that the, they will come out to him and say, where'd you get these scars in your hand? And he's going to say, these are those with which I got in the house of my friends. And all of those scales, the Bible says Israel has been, will be bl is blinded in part. So those scales are going to fall off of their eyes and they're going to say, Jesus, you are the Messiah. And the Bible says in Revelation um, 25, verse 11, and, uh, or no, Revelation chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, that are, I'm sorry, Romans 11, 25 and 26, that all of Israel will be saved at that point when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That all happens right there at the second coming of Jesus Christ. So you say, well, Dave, I told you that the rapture and the second coming were, were different events. That one we go up, one we come down. It's not a seven-year period in between them. That's the whole point here. Once you understand the timeline, you realize it's one continuous event. The rapture occurs immediately after the tribulation of those days. We have the marriage supper of the Lamb in the sky. We go straight to fight on behalf of Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. It's instantaneous. You say it can't be instantaneous. There's no way it could happen instantaneous. When, we're, when we are immortal, time, we're not bound by time anymore. God is not bound by time. Neither will we be. And so we could have the rapture, the marriage supper of the Lamb in the sky, go, go fight on behalf of Israel, just... Whoosh, I mean, what's the longest supper you've ever attended? Two, three hours maybe? And so it's one continuous event. There is no scriptures in the Bible. I hope you get this. There's no scriptures in the Bible that says there's a seven-year period in between the rapture and the second coming. It, no, there's no scriptures in the Bible for that. Not one. So that's why I wanted you to understand the timeline. And so it's also at this time that the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to be cast into the lake of fire. That's Revelation 19, 20. And this happens at the Battle of Armageddon. God, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 11, at the seventh trump, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. This is when everything is culminating right here. You say, is this the end of the world? No, this is the end of the age. Matthew 24, Jesus prophesied about the end of the age. There's still another 1,000 years left. But what am I looking for? I've had, I had some lady asking me today about um, who gets to live into the millennial reign and is there going to be a salvation plan and all, all kinds of things. I'm not really concerned about that. What I'm concerned about is I've got to get ready for the rapture and I've got to get everybody I know ready for the rapture. The Bible's kind of not super clear on some of the things that happened during the millennial reign. I can't give a lot of conclusive answers on that. But I can give you conclusive answers on leading up to the rapture, what it takes to get ready for that. And you and I all need to go in the rapture. That's got to be on your radar in your life. You can't go through your life and not even think about it and then think, well, when the rapture happens, God loves me so much, He's going to save everybody. That's not scriptural. The Bible doesn't say He's going to save everybody. The Bible actually says most people are going to be lost. So I, if, I, I've got to be one of the ones that go. I've got to be. I have to be. There's no, there's no two options for me. I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to make it. And I know God's helping me. And I know He's going to help you too. You say, well, Dave, you don't know what I've done. I don't care what you've done. I've known people my whole life to do some stuff that would just blow your mind. Murder, all kinds of stuff. And you, you got to get, don't let Satan lie to you and say, well, I've been too much of a sinner. I can't make it. That's a lie from Satan. Don't pay any attention to that. So right here at the end of the final seven years, the Antichrist and false prophet, they're cast into the lake of fire. Satan's thrown into the bottomless pit. He's bound. It's Revelation chapter 20. And this is when the battle of Armageddon culminates. And the Lord, the Bible says that the seventh trump, the kingdoms of this world, all the world governments done away with. Kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. And the Bible says that He will establish a physical kingdom here on the earth. Revelation uh, 5, verse 10, on the earth. And the saints will rule and reign as kings and priests with Him in that kingdom as immortals over mortals that have been allowed to live into the millennial reign. Uh, it's, it's likely that it would be people under the age of accountability, 19 years old and down. There's a precedence for that in the Old Testament. Um, can I give you a conclusive answer on that? No. But the Bible says there will be mortals that live into the millennial reign. But I also know that there will be people that are cast into the lake of fire at the time of the rapture. The, Revelation 19.20, the Antichrist and false prophet for sure. 
And so Satan is bound. The battle of Armageddon culminates and the Lord establishes his kingdom. It's right here at the end of our timeline here for the 1,000 year millennial reign. The Bible says the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord and I've got to be one of the ones that are ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ here on the earth. And this is, the Bible talks about the wolf laying down with the lamb and the, um, there, there's not going to be any more killing and it's going to be kind of going back to like an Adam and Eve type situation when the, the lifespans will be elongated. Back then the, with Adam and Eve and, and um, Noah and all them, they were living, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred years. Some people will live almost all the way through the 1,000 year millennial reign. And then at the end of the millennial reign is when we have the great white throne of judgment. And that is when everything culminates. The Bible says that at the end of the 1,000 years, Satan's going to be loose for a short period. He's going to deceive the nations to come back down to Israel and to Jerusalem specifically again to battle. But there's no battle because the Bible says that the Lord is done. He simply consumes them with a fire from heaven. Everybody, the Bible says, death and hell delivers up them to go to the great white throne of judgment. The Bible says the books are open. And at that point, that's when the Bible says everyone whose name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire um, and that is certainly something that obviously none of us want to be a part of, right? And so that's what happens right there at the very end. And then we enter off into uh, eternity with the Lord. The Bible says world without end. So I want to make sure you understand that the Bible specifically says that he comes as a thief in the night. Revelation 16, 15. Once you understand this timeline that right there at the, after the sixth vial of the wrath of God, behold, I come as a thief. That only happens one time in the near future. Blessed is he that watcheth, his, um, watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest they walk naked and they see his shame. Once you understand the prophecies of the Bible, then it'll let you know the rapture is not imminent and it's not the next event on God's prophetic timeline. I want to say God bless you all. Thank you for following us. If you have any questions, Contact myself or Doug Norvell, drobbins at endtime.com, dnorvell at endtime.com, and we can send you a copy of this timeline. God bless.